Hey everybody, it's Summer here with Done Naturally, and today I have a did you know. Let's talk nipple shields. So, unfortunately, for a long, long time, nipple shields got a bad rap. And it's because many decades ago, they were made with a very thick silicone or thick latex. And some of them were even really looking more like bottle nipples and didn't allow the breast tissue to move in and out of them. And people just popped them on and expected the tissue to come up in there and it wouldn't. And those older style nipple shields led to a reduced milk supply, babies not getting enough milk, eventual possible failure to thrive, bad things. But we've grown and changed and developed and those style of nipple shields are no longer available. The nipple shields that we use now do not pose a risk to breastfeeding. They don't pose a risk to your milk supply. What we use now is a very, very thin silicone for a nipple shield and that allows the tissue to come up into the shield so the baby can properly stimulate. Now it's important that one is properly fit for a nipple shield because you are, when we're doing that, we're fitting due to the baby's size, their mouth, and the mother's size herself, the size of her nipple, and whether or not that can accommodate and come together for the baby. So you have to be properly fit, you have to be shown how to properly put it on, and then someone needs to be observing you that the baby is nursing well with the nipple shield and still transferring milk or moving milk from mom to baby. So if those things are in place, we don't have a risk. I will say that nipple shields can often be helpful in the NICU world and also for late preterm babies, those more cusp babies that aren't quite term between 35 and 38 weeks. Why? Well, in the NICU, these babies are imprinting and learning to suck, practicing to suck, developing that with a pacifier because you can't jump in that isolate. That would be amazing if we could create something like that where mom could be in there too and baby practiced on her breast and nipple but it's not a thing. So they have to learn how to suck on a pacifier. That's very important. So they've imprinted on something that's firm and silicone, and we need them to do that. So as we're learning to breastfeed, sometimes nipple shields can help those babies in the NICU. Sometimes they don't need them, but a lot of times they do, even if a mother has very everted nipples, ones that poke out. And that's because Premature babies or late pretermers need more pressure up on their palate. And that pressure on their palate stimulates an acupressure point. And that acupressure point is what helps them keep sucking. So a lot of times a soft nipple, even if it's poked out, won't do that. And so a baby might latch on, suck a little bit, come right off. And so that nipple shield can help them stay on and transfer more milk. And there's actually been quite a lot of studies demonstrating that in the premature world and the late preterm world, that nipple shields with those babies, they transfer more milk. Full term world, totally different thing. Typically we use nipple shields because a mother ha may have flat nipples, she might have inverted nipples, uh, she might just be having trouble latching on for whatever reason. It might have nothing to do with her anatomy. It might not have anything to do with the baby's age, size, baby's anatomy, but they're just struggling. So when I look at nipple shields, I certainly am not doling them out like candy, but I look at them as a tool that can be used to help breastfeeding, especially when the alternative might be pumping and exclusively pumping and bottle feeding which takes a lot more steps. You're pumping and then you're feeding the baby. Whereas when you're breastfeeding, even if there's a shield in place, it's just one step. So I look at it like that, that it can help if breastfeeding's not working like you want it to or because of baby's age. 
that can help. It doesn't mean necessarily that forever you're going to be using a nipple shield. Moms that use them long term are typically those moms that have more inverted nipples or more very flat nipples. Moms that are using them because the baby's in the NICU or because the baby is a late pretermer, those moms are usually using them for maybe a few weeks, a few months, something like that, and they quickly wean off of them. A great tip if you're using a nipple shield, because people feel like it's another apparatus or another thing that they need to have and they have to find or get lost or get stuck in the couch or you need it and you're upstairs and the nipple shield you remember is downstairs. And that can be a hassle. Great thing to do if you're using it in more of a long-term way is keep it in your cleavage, in your bra. Then you're never losing it. It's always right where you need it, when you need it. It's also being exposed to less germs because it's not out and about, because it's just tucked in you. And if you are outside of the hospital, and your baby is also outside of the hospital, then we're talking about not needing to be quite as careful with germs because we're not talking about prematurity. So in that case, you don't necessarily even need to be washing it every single time. Obviously, you do need to wash it, uh, but maybe not be quite as regimented about it. Um, in the hospital setting, you need to be washing the nipple shield after every single use warm soapy water. There's different brands. There are ones that have a cutout for the baby to smell the mother's skin. Nothing to do with breathing because some nipple shields are a full circle. That's something that when you are selecting that and working with a lactation consultant or a bedside nurse and getting help, then we need to be seeing proper fit, proper latch, proper milk transfer, and protect the mother's milk supply. If we're talking about prematurity and late pretermers, those mothers are gonna be pumping anyway because that's what we do with those at-risk babies. If we're talking about a full-term mom, we might need to pump a little bit in the beginning just to help her milk supply be stimulated. We might not, particularly if she is a multiparous mother who's had other children or has experience with using a nipple shield, we might not need to add pumping into that mix. That's something that needs to be evaluated by the lactation consultant by watching those feedings and watching the baby's output and weight. So all in all, nipple shields are not like evil and they're not just going to ruin a milk supply and you don't have to worry about, ah, when am I gonna wean from them? The key is sometimes it can help breastfeeding and not make a mother move to exclusively pumping and bottle feeding breast milk. So hopefully that helps you. And if you need something like that, you don't have to feel like, oh my God, you've lost something or now everything's all ruined. There's a lot of tools and tricks we have up our sleeve and there's a lot of different baby scenarios and mother scenarios and we can always make it work and make it simple for you. So that's what I got today. You guys have a really good one. See you later. Bye.